Aloha everyone, my name is Charles and this is the Hawaii Kilauea Volcano Update for November 12th, 2019. In this report, I will cover some minor changes with the Kilauea Volcano itself and the latest information on the Halemaumau Crater Lake. Finally, I will wrap it up with a discussion and look at some of the videos provided by the USGS from the recent collection of the Crater Lake water sample. On November 7th, 2019, at 11.17 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, the USGS reports there is still no eruptive activity from the Kilauea volcano. However, monitoring data continues to indicate steady rates of seismicity and ground deformation with low rates of sulfur dioxide emissions and only minor geological changes since September 2018. The latest analysis of the monitoring data seems to indicate no significant changes in activity during September, though seismic stations have detected over 1,600 events. That is an increase of plus minus 12% from last month. It also appears the concurrent increases in seismicity seem to have lost their timing. The evidence presented for this is the lower rates of seismicity following the October 13th swarm event. Emission rates of sulfur dioxide are still at low levels at the summit and are below detection limits at Pu'o'o and lower east rift zone locations. Even though there is no eruptive activity, there are areas that consistently exhibit elevated ground temperatures and persistent discharge of gases in the areas of the 2018 lower east rift zone fissures. These gases seem to be comprised mainly of water steam, trace amounts of hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. Following the 1955 eruption, similar conditions were present and observed. Therefore, it is logical to expect these conditions to continue, which could persist for years or decades to come. Beginning in March of 2019, GPS monitoring stations and tilt meters placed at the Kilauea summit have captured data confirming deformation consistent with slow magma accumulation. This swelling is in the shallow portion of the Kilauea summit magma system, which is approximately one to two kilometers or one mile below ground level. Data from gas measurements, however, do not reveal any indication of notable shallowing of magma at this time. If you enjoy these updates and want to receive notifications of future videos, you will need to click that subscribe button and click the bell icon and select all notifications. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we also have some amazing merch available. Links to all that and more is down below in the description. Moving over to Pu'o'o area, there was an inflationary event that occurred during the end of September into the first week of October. Monitoring stations near the cone, such as OKIT, NPOC, KAMO, and KALR, encountered an acceleration in motion that indicates potential source inflation in the rift between Pu'o'o and Kupai'anaha. At the East Rift Zone, GPS stations and tilt meters continue to detect movement consistent with the reduced recharging of the Deep East Rift Zone magma storage. This region is in the area between Pu'o'o and Highway 130. At this time, monitoring data does not show any forthcoming changes in the current volcanic hazards for that area. Concluding this portion of the report, I would like to remark, the south flank of Kilauea is proceeding to move slowly seaward at elevated rates. Following the 6.9 magnitude earthquake near Kalapana on May 4, 2018. Up at the Halemaumau Crater Lake, a water sample was collected by an unmanned aircraft system on October 26, 2019. The preliminary analysis of the sample reveals a pH of 4.2, which is considered moderately acidic. It also shows high concentrations of dissolved sulfur and magnesium, which is believed to reflect the complex processes and interactions between magmatic gases, groundwater, and basaltic rocks. 
It appears the water's composition is significantly different from rainwater and water from the Keller Well, located 1.5 kilometers or one mile south of the crater, which, in my opinion, is not a surprising discovery. I would expect such to be the case since the water is a weak sulfuric acid and as such would act as a catalyst for a variety of potential chemical reactions to occur. Though the differences between the water from the Keller Well and Crater Lake seem to show, the release scene of magmatic gases are primarily under the crater and lake water. This observation would also be consistent with long-term observations and monitoring at the summit. The high sulfur level in the crater lake water indicates that the pool is absorbing a tremendous amount of sulfur dioxide emitted by the subsurface magma. Current emissions of sulfur dioxide at the summit are now approximately 30 tons per day. However, this is not a correct representation of the emissions released from the subsurface magma. If the lake was absent the crater, sulfur dioxide rates should be higher, such as the emission rates of approximately 200 tons per day as they were before the appearance of the lava lake in 2008. Changes in sulfate concentrations of future samples should be an indication of changes in the sulfur dioxide degassing and magma depth. I want to remind everyone, the lake is variable in color and temperature. This single water sample only represents a small part of the water body and should not be considered to reflect the lake as a whole. Further samples from various locations in the lake will be needed to fully understand the wondrous and complex system that has replaced the lava lake at the Kilauea summit. This video is from October 26, 2019 water sampling of the crater lake. In the full view video, we can see the unmanned aircraft system approaching the Halima'uma'u lake to collect the sample. The video I added in the top right corner is the same. However, I have enhanced the image slightly and zoomed in on the drone so that we can see it a little better. The next video is of the same collection attempt but from a zoomed in perspective. I have also enhanced the contrast just a bit for clarity. Once the drone has reached the lake, you can see the ripples clearly on the water surface, evidence of the wind and convection currents in the crater itself.
In this third video, we get a drone camera view looking straight down at the lake as the drone goes in for the sample. This view is the most precise and closest look at the water lake to date that anyone has seen. If you watch the cable suspended from the drone, you can see just how windy it is down there. I must give credit to the pilot of this craft. Whoever the person is did a fantastic job. In this fourth and last video, we get the same camera down drone view but in a thermal spectrum video. In this imaging, white is hot and black is cold. The majority of motion you see in the black line features across the pond is veins of steam blowing across the water surface. Based on this thermal videography, it would appear the temperature of the water is relatively even across the surface. However, Something interesting seems to appear once the water collection vessel enters the water. The surface changes from white to black, which seems to indicate a significant drop in temperature. However, I do not think that is what is happening here. Based on this thermal imagery, it looks like there may be some majorly different chemistry between the surface and subsurface water levels, perhaps even some sort of film floating on the surface. I am not sure what to think about this, to be honest, and I would love to hear what you have to say about it in the comments below. If you appreciate this type of content, consider clicking that like button to let me know. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out some of the great photos I have on my Facebook and Instagram pages. This update has been your Hawaii Volcano Watch Report for November 12th, 2019. Mahalo for watching and have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening.